In what light should Stefan Iverson be regarded? For some, he's a Norwegian prodigy, a player who burst on the scene as a 19-year-old and an integral part of five title-winning campaigns. For others, he's an injury-prone striker that frustrated at English side Tottenham Hotspur, dominating one week as much as he would be peripheral the next. So who is the real Stefan Iversen? Iversen was born in Oslo, but began his career a long way from the capital. He started out at Rosenberg, the giants of Norwegian football, who are based in the city of Trondheim, some 500 kilometers north of his birthplace. It's the club where Iversen's father, Odd, is considered one of the all-time greats, and Stefan started his career on a similar trajectory. But he didn't hang around for comparisons to be made. In 1995 and 96, his first two seasons at the club, Iversen Jr. won back-to-back -back league titles, with his exploits catching the eye of a number of clubs overseas. In December 96, shortly after his 20th birthday, Everson signed for Tottenham Hotspur. Of course, when I signed, I was quite excited. I was going to a league I'd dreamt of playing in since I was a little boy, and I was going to a big club like Tottenham as well. Another Norwegian, Erik Torstvet, was also there, so of course it was a very special moment for me. He settles into English life quickly, but the real test would come on the pitch. The Premier League gives players a notoriously physical examination, and the six foot one Everson wasn't exempt. His debut came against Coventry City. Yes, I remember that match well. There were lots of aerial battles, and I got hit hard in the neck. After that, Teddy Sheringham walked up to me and said, Welcome to the Premier League. When he played, Everson consistently found the net. Thanks largely to the great threat he posed in the air, he was the club's top scorer in the 98-99 season with 13 goals. He scored another 17 the following term to again top the Spurs' scoring charts. All strikers have a knack of remembering goals they've scored, no matter how they went in, and Everson is no exception. There are several that stick out, but that first goal against Manchester United was special. It wasn't pretty, but it was a funny goal, and it's so bad it's on YouTube. But his goal-scoring exploits weren't consistent enough for some. He epitomised the Spurs team of the time, blessed with real, proven talent, but only able to demonstrate frustratingly few glimpses of it. One thing was constant, however, and that was injury. He suffered from a slip disc in his back for much of his Spurs career, and a combination of knee, nose, head and ankle problems, as well as a broken jaw, would keep him on the treatment table throughout his time in London. We had a team that was good enough to do better. We were in Europe one year, after we won the Worthington Cup, I think it was called that at the time, and we were unlucky we didn't get further in Europe too. But I think we had a team that should have achieved more than it did. To be honest, there were many things I would like to change from my time there. After I arrived at Tottenham, I had a series of injuries and was virtually out of the game for two years. You know, some of the treatment I got for these injuries in England was bad. I had an operation I probably didn't need, and that kept me out of the game for nearly 16 months. So after seven years at White Hart Lane and a highest league finish of just ninth, Everson went in search of a new lease of life. That search took him to Wolverhampton Wanderers for the 2003-2004 season. It would prove to be an unsatisfactory experience that ended in relegation. No, I wasn't very pleased with that spell. Wolves had a manager that I thought used players the wrong way. We had seven players out on loan for a year and he didn't use any of them, and that made the team weaker. I think Wolves could have stayed up if they'd been a bit more sensible. 
For many fans of the Premier League at least, his legacy has been one of never quite fulfilling his great potential. But there's more to his career than eight years in England. He made his international debut in 1998, the same year he'd helped Norway to an improbable third place at the European Under-21 Championship. He's since played 77 times for his nation, which puts him ninth on Norway's all-time appearance list, and his goal tally stands at 21 and counting. It's not a bad return for any international striker, particularly one picked from a population of less than 5 million. In the end, he returned to his homeland. Initially, he went to Volarenga, where in 2005 he helped them lift their first league title in 20 years, his first taste of league success in a decade. But the lure of a return to the place it all began proved too strong. Yes, of course it was. It was also strong when I went to Volaringa, as I've always followed Volaringa since I was a small boy. It's always been between them and Rosenborg. They've been the two teams closest to my heart. Perhaps that was why I chose Volaringa. I've always wanted to play for them. I played there for two years, but when I got the opportunity to go back to Rosenborg, back to where I grew up, I had to say yes. Here he's found the form and consistency that originally caught the eye back when he was a teenager. And 2006 was perhaps the best season of his career. Everson scored 17 times to foul Rosenborg to the league title and he was named Norway's Player of the Year in the process. The 32-year-old shining brightly this season as well, with Rosenborg having just been crowned Norwegian champions yet again. Five league titles, 77 international caps and 16 years at the top of the game. That's not bad for a so-called injury-prone, inconsistent performer. Maybe it's time you reassessed your opinion of Stefan Iversen.